All right, second graders, I am going to read you a book called The Salamander Room. We are going to visualize with this book. I will show you the front cover, The Salamander Room, but I am not going to show you any of the pictures because I want you to create that movie in your mind, and I want you to be thinking about what, what does the author want you to see? What would the illustrator be drawing with the words that you're hearing? So on, right now I'm going to read you the, uh, the Salamander Room by Anne Mazer. The Salamander Room. Brian found a salamander in the woods. It was a little orange salamander that crawled through the dried leaves of the forest floor. The salamander was warm and cozy in the boy's hand. Come live with me. Brian said. He took the salamander home. But where will he sleep? His mother asked. I will make him a salamander bed to sleep in. I will cover him with leaves that are fresh and green and bring moss that looks like little stars to be a pillow for his head. I will bring crickets to sing him to sleep and bullfrogs to tell him good night stories. Now, second graders, before I keep reading, I hope that you are visualizing in your head what you're hearing. What pictures are you seeing? What's the movie that's playing in your head? And when he wakes up, where will he play? I will carpet my room with shiny, wet leaves and water them so he can slide around and play. I will bring tree stumps into my room so he can climb up the bark and sun himself on top. And I will bring boulders that he can creep over. But he will miss his friends in the forest. I will bring salamander friends to play with him. They will be hungry. How will you feed them? I will bring insects to live in my room and every day I will catch some and feed the salamanders, and I will make little pools of water on top of the boulders so they can drink water whenever they're thirsty. The insects will multiply and soon there will be bugs and insects everywhere. I will find birds to eat the extra bugs and insects, and the bullfrogs will eat them too. Where will the birds and the bullfrogs live? I will bring trees for the birds to roost in and make ponds for the frogs. Birds need to fly. We can lift off the ceiling. They will sail out in the sky, but they will come back to my room when it is time for dinner because they will know that the biggest, juiciest insects are there. Second graders, I hope that you are visualizing in your head what I'm reading. Keep creating that movie in your mind, those images. What colors are you seeing? What things are you seeing? What are you hearing? But the trees, how will they grow? The rain will come through the open roof and the sun too. And vines will creep up the walls of my room. And ferns will grow under my bed. There will be big white mushrooms and moss like little stars growing around the tree stumps that the salamanders climb on. And you, where will you sleep? I will sleep on a bed under the stars with the moon shining through the green leaves of the trees. Owls will hoot and crickets will sing. And next to me, on the boulder, with its head raised, Resting on the soft moss, the salamander will sleep. All right, second graders, that is the end of our story, The Salamander Room. I want you, if you need to listen to that story again, go ahead and listen to that story again to get your visualizations. But you need to finish up your drawing of what you visualize. What's one drawing, one mental picture that you heard in the story and then you can listen to The Salamander Room by Ann Mazer and compare your visualizations with hers and see how close you were with your visualizations. Were they the same as the illustrators? Go check it out.